Hey, Jeff, are you there? If you are, pick up. Is it true that the company is sending you to Los Angeles? Oh, hey, Mandy, what's up? Uh, why do you know about that? I don't remember telling you about that yet. I was just at the supermarket and I ran into Mrs. Johnson and she told me about it. Oh, uh, yeah, really? Really? Is that all you can say? How could you have kept such an important thing from me? You should have told me way in advance. I mean, it seems so sudden. I wasn't ready. Getting transferred into LA? Really? Yeah, well, not really transferred in the literal sense. My three-month training period has ended, so I was just assigned my position, that's all. I'm not being transferred, but assigned to my first position. Oh, really? It's not a transfer then? No, I only received my assignment this morning. I knew I was going to be assigned somewhere. I figured it might be local, but it just turned out there was a position open in L.A. I just contacted my folks and informed them just 30 minutes ago. Oh, okay. Now I see the whole picture. No wonder I'm only just hearing about it. Sorry to get so panicky. So does that mean you'll be living right in the city or renting a place in the suburbs? Neither. There's a company-owned apartment a little outside the city. Nice coastal area. I'll probably have to get a car and commute to work. Huh? Not right in the city. No, this will be the first time living near a big city. Figure I should gradually get used to it first. Does that mean, you know, company own that there are certain restrictions? Yeah, I'm sure there are some restrictions. Basically, it will be assigned to me and I can't have anybody else living there. Of course, I can have people over on occasion. I see. But when you move there, please keep in contact with me, okay? Don't sort of just, you know, just drift away. No worries. I plan to visit during Thanksgiving and Christmas. Also, on occasion, business trips back to HQ here. Our folks live just a few blocks away, so we'll constantly be in touch, I'm sure. Yeah, right. That makes me feel a whole lot better. Not sure how you feel, but are you okay with it all? Yeah, I'm fine with it. Why wouldn't I be? All right, then. Is that all you wanted to know? I gotta get going. I'm on my way to a meeting. Yeah, no problem. See ya. Hey, Jeff, what's up? It's been a while. How you been? Hey, Mandy. Yeah, I'm doing okay. It's been a while, I guess. Yeah, but we did see each other uh, Christmas. How long have you been gone? I can't believe it's been three long years since you got assigned to the L.A. office. You never contact me. I always line you first. What's up with that? Yeah, but I always stop off and say hello when I'm back, right? Like last Christmas and Thanksgiving. Plus a few other times on those business trips. Yeah, just a hello. Why can't we go have a few drinks or maybe go out for a bit to eat? At least we could do that. A few drinks, huh? Yeah, right. You don't want to go out for a few drinks with me? But forget that for now. I was contacting because... I heard from your mom that you were coming back for a short visit to the main office. Yeah, that's right. I'm scheduled to fly in this weekend. Got a few meetings to attend on Monday. Just wondering, but what are your plans for the weekend or after work? Uh, I can't really get into the details, but I have a meeting with a client Monday morning and then maybe business lunch afterwards. As for the weekend, my boss told me I could leave early on Friday so I could spend time with the family over the weekend. Oh, yeah? So that means you're free Friday night, right? Yeah, I guess so. So you arrive at the airport in the morning, right? Yeah, that's about right. Okay, roger that. Uh, you seem all set for something. What is it? Come on, Jeff. You're so slow to catch on. Slow to? I'm not sure what you mean. Gotta go. Looking forward to seeing you on the weekend. Hey, Jeff. What's up? 
Uh, hey, Mandy? Guess where I am. I'm at the airport to pick you up. Oh, yeah? Now, why would you pick me up? I never asked you to. How about you, Jeff? Where you at? I'm working. Yeah, right. Of course you are. I suppose it's still a bit early. But we could have lunch, right? Flight's like two hours from LA, maybe less? We could head over to the new restaurant downtown. You'll love this place. Hey, can I ask you why? What do you mean? We haven't seen each other in a while. You don't come back that often. So I figured we should use this precious time wisely. That's all. I'm sorry to have to break this to you, but I already made plans for lunch today. Huh? What do you mean? Actually, I already arrived earlier this morning on the red-eye flight. I'm about to meet up with a client for lunch, so I'm gonna have to cut this short. Excuse me, I thought you were going to meet up with me. I came all the way to the airport to pick you up. Please, I don't really have time for this. This is all part of work. I really have to get going. I can't believe you. I left home early this morning. I even made reservations at the restaurant. Now I'm going to have to cancel. Really sorry. I really have to go. Talk to you again. Mandy, are you there? What the hell did you do? Pardon me, are you serious? That new restaurant I was talking about? I was going to have lunch with you there. I was looking forward to it all week. And you had the gall to take another woman there. Are you out of your mind? How could you? You're despicable. I can't believe you took her there. Excuse me? You're the one that's despicable? I never consented to go into the restaurant with you. I didn't even know it was that restaurant, for God's sake. Oh, yeah, sure. Anyway, who the hell is that woman you were with? Pardon me? I said, who the hell was the woman you were having lunch with? I can't believe you were having lunch with someone other than me. You're beyond contempt. I really don't know what you're trying to say. What do you care who I have lunch with? It's none of your business. It's not if we're married. Just so you know, the woman I was with was a client. She's in charge of sales. Excuse me? A client? Her office is currently being renovated, and it was just more convenient to have the meeting somewhere else. We figured we would just make it a lunch business meeting. Her section manager was scheduled to arrive a little later. Are you being straight with me? So does that mean that she's just a business acquaintance and not some girlfriend? Of course not! Like I said, she's a sales rep for a local company. This was the first time meeting her. Oh, now I see. I just thought, you know, my bad. I guess I just made a hasty assessment of the situation. <laughs> okay then. I don't want to interrupt your business dealings, so... I'll just wait while you take care of business. Have you been drinking? Drinking? No, of course not. You've already disrupted my work. The store manager tried to stop you from entering, but you barged in anyway. You rushed to my client and started bad-mouthing her. Hurling insults at her just for having lunch with me. What the hell is wrong with you? When I tried to intervene, you slapped me across the face and took off out of the restaurant. After you left, all hell broke loose. Complete pandemonium. We had no choice but to terminate the meeting. Terminate? Really? And what's more, when you knocked over the table, my client's laptop got totaled. If that wasn't enough, a pitcher of water got dumped on it after it fell and all the data was lost. Huh, really? I didn't intend to. You also stomped all over my briefcase and ruined the USB memory in there. Lost all the important data. Uh, I was only trying to, you know... But, lucky for you, we both had data backed up on our computers at the office, so... We scheduled a new meeting for Monday afternoon. 
Don't think you're just gonna get away with what you did. There are consequences for what you did. No doubt you'll be paying me for a new laptop and a USB memory. I'll send you a bill. I expect you to pay for it. Are you serious? You make me out to be some kind of fiend. I'm not the only one at fault here, you know. Excuse me? You're supposed to be my boyfriend. I should be your priority. Hold it right there. Your what? Boyfriend? I'm hearing you right. Did you say I was your boyfriend? Yeah, and another thing. You say I have to pay for damages. Well, as my boyfriend, I think you should pay that. Why would I do that? I was the one that was supposed to be at that restaurant today. It was our date. But no, you had to go and meet with that woman. You said it was all work, but the fact is you went to that restaurant with another woman. The facts don't lie, Jeff. You have this beautiful girlfriend, and you ignored that and went out with another woman. That's what you did. I was deprived of precious time with my boyfriend. The least you could do is pay for damages. Oh, yeah. And I bet you were going to pay the bill for that little lovey-dovey lunch date. Am I right? Uh, Mandy, stop for a sec. I heard you. I heard you say I'll take care of the bill. I heard it with my own ears as I walked. The only person that has the right to get treated by you is me. And me alone. After all, I'm your girlfriend. You know what? This means you are cheating on me. How could you treat your girlfriend this way? Yeah, you're kind of starting to scare me, Mandy. Excuse me? As for paying the bill, when we had our last meeting, they paid the bill so the company requested that I pay it this time. Of course, my company credit card. My boss asked me to pay the bill. How can I refuse? Huh. So it was all just business? But more importantly, to be honest, I know where to begin. What are you talking about? Am I right in assuming that you wanted me to pay for what you did because you think I'm your boyfriend, right? Yeah, that's right. Obvious, isn't it? That's what boyfriends do, right? Pay for his beautiful girlfriend's dinner or lunch or whatever. And that goes for paying for stuff like damaged laptops. A boyfriend always protects his woman. That's always been the way. This is nuts, Mandy. You've got your wires all screwed up. Besides, you, you're definitely not my girlfriend. Pardon me? I said I'm not your boyfriend. When did we do this? I really can't recall. Stop right here, Jeff. What the hell are you saying? Not my boyfriend? How could you say that? I can say that because I know it. I never dated you. We never even talked about it. Where did you ever come up with this notion anyway? I know we grew up together since grade school and... We spent a lot of time together, but when did you decide we were going steady? Thinking back on it, I don't remember making a pass at you or even talking about it. But that time, at her high school graduation... At her high school graduation? What are you talking about? Don't you remember? That girl that had a crush on you since elementary school? Remember her? She kind of opened up about having a crush on you. Huh? Yeah, I saw to remember something like that. What about it? I told her I was already dating someone else and turned her down, as I recall. That person you said you were dating, you meant me, right? Pardon me? I was pretty taken aback when that girl opened up about her feelings toward you, but... I was overjoyed that you turned her down and chose me. I can't believe that you would say it was not your girl. It was always a given. Hold it one second. When did I ever say you were the girl I was dating at the time? Huh? Well, I thought... You know, you said it right in front of me, so I figured... Yeah, you always seemed to be around back in those days, come to think of it. You always follow me around. I wasn't following you around. We were just hanging out. I was with all the guys celebrating our graduation. You just happened to be there. As a matter of fact, you were the only girl there. The other girls were celebrating their own little groups. To be honest, I was surprised to see you standing there after that girl approached me. Huh? 
You're kidding, right? Just so you know, there is a specific girl that I'm seeing now. Excuse me? Say again. That's right, and we just got engaged. Engaged? Are you serious? You mean engaged engaged? I suppose you'll find out sooner or later, so I'll tell you. My fiancé is Sarah. Huh? Sarah? Not that Sarah. Yup, that's Sarah. You know her, of course, the very same Sarah. Our former high school classmate. We've been seeing each other since high school. Since high school? Way back then? And when I moved to L.A., she moved in with me about a year later. I had to move out of the company dorm, of course, but we got a nice place near the beach. You guys are living together? That's another reason why we came back home a little early. So we could submit our marriage documents at the city hall. You guys are getting married? What about me? What was I to you all these years? I always expected to marry you someday. You were just an old friend from the neighborhood, that's all. That's it and nothing more. You're kidding, right? No, I'm dead serious, Mandy. Maybe this incident was a blessing in disguise. We sure did clear the air, didn't we? That's it? Just clear the air? How about that damaged laptop? I'll send the bill to your folks' place and call them to explain the whole thing. Tell you what, just pay the damages for the laptop. Forget about the USB. I got plenty more of those. But she did make a mess of the restaurant. You'll probably see a bill from them too. And one last thing. If you see me around, don't approach or talk to me. You got that? I'm finished with you, so I'm gonna have to block you online. Okay, I gotta get going. Bye. Wait, Jeff, please! Mandy later got a bill for the damages. It turned out to be more than I expected. The cost of the damaged laptop, the restaurant damages included broken dishes, damaged tables, and when she left the place, she slammed the door and cracked on the door glass, which had to be replaced. On top of that, the place had to close for a few days to carry out repairs, so... Compensation for lost business. It seems a couple of customers also demanded compensation. Apparently for food spilled on their clothes when she knocked over the table. I heard the cost was well over $20,000. As for me and Sarah, we submitted our marriage certificate at City Hall. And even celebrated with an intimate dinner. No, not at that restaurant, fortunately. I was sort of expecting Mandy to barge at any moment to disrupt it all, but... Fortunately, nothing like that happened. I later heard that Mandy was living at home all this time, and... According to her mom, she was just waiting to someday marry me. Can you believe it? Her parents were completely unaware of her intentions and was totally taken aback when they heard. They were now dead set on re-educating their daughter to get her to come to her senses. They apparently moved to a rural location to live a quiet life. Maybe it will do her some good. Her parents stopped by to congratulate us on our marriage, but although sincere... There was sadness in their eyes as I left. Bailey, what time are you coming home tonight? Do you want to go out and do something with me tonight? There's a new Italian restaurant we could try. Sorry, Mom, I've got to go to work tonight. I've got that part-time job now, remember? Why don't you take Haley with you? Oh, you're working tonight. All right, we'll just have to do it another time then. Huh? It's okay, just go without me. You haven't taken Haley anywhere for a long time. It's fine, we can go there together some other time. Go there with Haley tonight. No, it's okay, I'm not doing that. I'm not taking Haley anywhere just because you're not free. You're not taking Haley anywhere. But I think Haley has a lot of things she'd like to talk with you about. It'll be a good opportunity. She's got that entrance exam for that private junior high school coming up. And I'm sure she wants to discuss it and her options for new schools next year. Oh, you don't have to worry about anything like that. God, Haley is so short and she's got that nose that sticks out. Oh, I don't want to be seen with her. She doesn't have a single good feature about her. Mom, did you just say that? Have you said that to her? 
You wouldn't say something like that to her, would you? Of course not! I wouldn't say that to her face! She's only 12, but if I'm being honest, you are clearly the beautiful one. Oh, I've got a great idea. How about you and I go shopping this Saturday? Let's get you some beautiful new clothes. Um, okay. If I've got some time, let's go. Great, it'll be so much fun. Hey, Mom, are you going to invite Haley too? Huh? No, of course not. Well, why not? Bailey! Haley isn't smart like you. That girl needs to stay home and study all day, every day, if she wants to pass any kind of test for next year. So, it'll just be the two of us shopping on Saturday. Well, you probably ought to be off to work soon. Be sure to message me when you're finished. I'll come by and pick you up after work. Hey, Dad. Can I talk to you now? Oh, aren't you working tonight? They changed the start time of my shift without telling me. So I'm here having something to eat, waiting for my shift to start. Oh, so what's up? I need to talk to you about Mom. Why did something happen? Well, I think she's being really mean to Haley. I think she's been ignoring Haley purposely for a while now. I don't know, I just get that feeling. Really? What do you think? Well, not that you're home much nowadays because of your job to notice. Yeah, I suppose that's true. I don't know much about how she's been treating Haley, but I have noticed she's been favoring you recently. I didn't think it was enough that you or Haley would notice, though. I don't really know. But anyway, more importantly, right now I've got a big meeting I need to get to. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't worry, I should be home much earlier tonight than I have been recently. I'll be finished by the time you get off work tonight. Do you want me to swing by and pick you up? Uh, no, it's okay. Mom already said she'd come get me. Well, I'll call your mom and let her know I'll pick you up instead. We can talk about everything in the car on the way home. Okay, that sounds good. Mom, where are you right now? What do you mean, where are you? I'm out shopping right now. I'm at the mall. Why? You want to come too? Shopping? Now's not the time to be shopping. Haley's doing that big presentation at school today. The parents were supposed to come and watch the kids. Oh, that. Yeah, I know, but it's okay. What? What do you mean it's okay? All the parents are going and you know Dad can make it. You promised Haley you'd go. If you don't go, she's going to be the only one there by herself. Oh, it doesn't matter if I'm there or not. If Haley does poorly, she won't want me there to see it anyway. And if she does well, the teacher will be sure to let me know at the next parent-teacher night. There's one coming up soon, just before the school year finishes. Huh? But Haley will be waiting for you to come today, won't she? No, she won't. I told her this morning I wasn't going to go. Besides, I'd just be embarrassed when she screws up, and so would she. You know how bad she is at school. I'd be too embarrassed if I went. I don't want anyone knowing she's my daughter. Were you that embarrassed with me, too? I remember when I had my presentation, I messed up a couple times, and it was quite obvious to everyone. Oh, you mean that! Oh, that was the equipment's fault, not yours. Those were just technical difficulties. You were great. That's nothing you should even have worried about. Anyway, next week you've got that three-day-long school trip, right? Stop it. Why are you being so nice to me? And why are you avoiding Haley so much? I just want you to be nicer to Haley for a change. Bailey, I get it. I'm sorry. From now on, I'll try to be a lot nicer to your sister. Next week, when you're away on your trip, I'll take your sister on a trip, and it'll just be the two of us. Really? Yeah, really. I'll let her miss school, and I'll take her all the way to Phoenix. Just the two of us. Oh, to Grandma's house. That sounds like fun. I'm sure she'll love going there with you. So don't worry about your sister. 
You just worry about enjoying your school trip. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, Mom. Why were you calling me? Dad! Where are you right now? What do you mean, where am I? I'm at work. I'm eating lunch right now. What's wrong? Dad, you have to help Haley. Huh? Did something happen? Right now, she's at some park in Phoenix by herself. Phoenix? Why is she in Phoenix? Mom took her there yesterday. They were supposed to be going there to see Grandma and Grandpa. But when they got there, Grandma and Grandpa weren't home. Mom told Haley to wait outside their house until they got home, and then she just drove off. Your mother's parents never came home. Yeah, Haley said they never came back. She used what little money she had on her to call me. She said she locked herself in a stall in a public toilet last night and slept there. It was the only shelter with a little bit of security that she could find. And she said she hasn't eaten anything since she's been there. You've got to be kidding. She said she was going to try find a police station to go to, but that's when the call cut off. It was a payphone, so I had no way of calling her back, and I don't think she has any money to make another call. Okay, I got it. I'm gonna drive there right now and get her myself. I'm so sorry, I know you're at work right now. I don't care about that, don't apologize. I can't work when I know my baby needs me, I'm leaving right now. Thanks, Dad. Oh, and don't mention this to Mom. I don't trust her anymore. I understand. I'm gonna talk with a teacher here and see what I can do. I'll message you again later. Bailey, are you enjoying your school trip? I'm out drinking with some old friends of mine from Phoenix. Oh, it sounds like you're having fun. What about Haley? Oh, she's still at her grandparents' place. She said she doesn't want to ever go home. She said she wants to live with Grandma and Grandpa forever. She must really love Phoenix. I don't think I'll ever be able to get her to come home with me. Really? Is that really what Haley said? It is, I swear. I know, I was surprised too. You're horrible. You know Haley is right here beside me. She cried herself to sleep. Dad and I had to save her. Huh? Dad found her at a police station in Phoenix. You left an elementary school girl outside in the sweltering heat with no water or food? Huh? What? What are you talking about? What the heck were you thinking? The police said when she walked into the station she had mild symptoms of heat stroke. How could you just abandon her like that? Wait, aren't you supposed to be on your school trip? You don't come back until tomorrow! Well, obviously, they took me home early because of the emergency. My teacher drove me all the way to Phoenix. Dad left work and went to Phoenix, too. We were all looking for Haley. Why would both of you go through all that trouble? Why wouldn't you just wait for Grandma and Grandpa to come back and have them pick her up? What? We did get in touch with Grandma and Grandpa. They're away on vacation for a whole week and won't be coming back for another two days. You dropped Haley off at their house without even calling them to see if they were home. Come on, you're blowing this all out of proportion. Anyway, you said she's with you, right? So everyone is safe and sound and nothing bad happened. Let's talk about this when I get home tomorrow. Huh? You think we're gonna see you at home? We're not going home. What? We know why you don't like Haley. You don't like her because she isn't beautiful. And we'll never forgive you for that. From now on, I'll protect Haley. I'll be the only mother figure she needs. Huh? What is all of this? What are you talking about? As far as I'm concerned, you're not my mother anymore. Bailey! Why would you say that? Bailey, answer me! You! Where are you? You're with Bailey now, aren't you? Yeah. I want you to tell her this for me. 
Tell her she's got it all wrong. It's just a misunderstanding. She's not misunderstanding anything. I was the only one who misunderstood anything. You were just pretending to be a good mother when I was around. When I was busy with work, you were a totally different person. How could you treat our children like that? Wait! Now you're gonna get on my case about this too? And why are you being so nice to Haley? That girl is stupid and ugly. If we only had one daughter, I wish it would be Bailey. That's why I took Haley all the way to Phoenix. How can you say that about your own child? I can't believe this. Look, I know if someone else did what I did to her, it would be considered really bad. But I gave birth to her. Do you know how much pain I went through to do that? And the only thing a mother ever gets back from her children is the way that everyone around her perceives them. If they look good, she looks good. If they look bad, she looks bad. Bailey and Haley aren't accessories for your outfits. It makes sense, just think about it. If it was just you, me, and Bailey living together, it'd be like a dream. A beautiful woman, a handsome husband, and their lovely daughter. Why don't we ship Haley off to live with her grandparents? Let's have just the three of us living together. What do you say? You're disgusting. Huh? You look like a human on the outside, but you're really a monster, aren't you? You keep saying Haley is stupid and ugly, but you're the only stupid one. Don't you know she aced the National Math Olympiad for elementary school? Huh? Oh, so what's that? Well, maybe if you went to her presentation the other day, you would have known. That day was also when they announced the results in front of all the parents, teachers, and students. When you said you weren't going, Bailey rushed over to Haley's school so someone would be there for her. Huh? You're kidding! So is that a good award or something? It's a set of extremely hard math problems that Haley aced. All of her teachers were saying she might be able to win the Nobel Prize for Mathematics someday. Nobel Prize? You're kidding, that's amazing! I had no idea that Haley had that kind of talent. Hey, so why don't you three hurry up and get back to the house? I'll meet you there as soon as I can. Are you really that stupid? Huh? Haley is a smart girl. She knows how you've been treating her. That's why she's been studying hard every day for so long. It's not because she was bad at school. She's just been wanting to be really good at something. So that her mother would finally take notice of her. She did all that for you. She even aced a national math contest. But you didn't even go to the school to find out. Then a few days later, you drove her all the way over to Phoenix and abandoned her. You kicked her out of the car and drove away. Oh, come on. That's an exaggeration. I dropped her off at her grandparents' place. You make it sound so terrible. And don't blame me. You've been so busy with work, you don't pay attention to me or your daughters. Yeah, you're right about that part. I see that now. That's why I apologize to them from the bottom of my heart. And I'm going to make it up to them. I told them from now on my daughters are always going to come first. And I meant it. Well, in that case, I want to hurry up and get everyone home so I can apologize too. I've had a few drinks, so I can't drive home tonight. When do you think you guys will get home? I can leave early tomorrow morning. We're never going back to that house. What? Tomorrow I'm filing for a divorce. You can have the house if you want it, but I'm taking the girls. Your parents know what happened and what you did, and I've already called my parents and told them. What are you talking about? What are you planning on doing? You're not leaving me, are you? I'm never signing those divorce papers, so just forget about that. Well, I'm going to my lawyer, and he can deal with you. No, you can't do this. Those are my daughters, too. I gave birth to them. Give them back. You know, Sadie, you abandoned Haley. You kicked her out of the car and drove away. You don't deserve them. We had to find her at a police station. You've already thrown your daughter away. Don't tell me that you want her now. Besides, if you don't agree to my divorce terms, the police we spoke to at the station are more than willing to have me press charges and get you arrested for what you did. 
I'm going to be getting full custody of Haley. And don't think for a second that Bailey or Haley will take your side in this either. I can't believe you're doing this. I'm gonna fight you on this one. Like I said, if you fight me on this, I'll press charges and you'll likely go to jail for abandoning Haley yesterday. You know Bailey and Haley want to live with me. I want to show everyone my little girl and tell them she could be a Nobel Prize winner someday. Tell you what, you can ask them, and if they say they want to live with you, I'll let them. But only if they say they want to. After that, we went back to my father's parents' place, and our mother eventually came there to see us. She actually thought that Haley and I would choose to live with her after the divorce. In fact, she was so sure that we were going to go back home with her, it became obvious that she'd invited all her friends over to be there when we got back, just so she could show off her amazing daughters and Haley's math award to them. But when it became clear that my sister and I had no intentions of ever living with her again, she went into a rage and my grandparents had to call the police. Even when the police showed up, she still wouldn't calm down, so the police had to take her away. Even though she's my mother, I honestly didn't feel bad for her when they put her in the back of the police car. In fact, I'm never going to call her mom again. Now Haley and I are still waiting for the divorce to be finalized. But it's really fun to be looking for a new house so the three of us can start our new life together. We're all hoping that we never have to deal with that woman ever again. <laughs>